Hello, Bulldogs. It's your teacher, Miss Raymond. Um, I'm here today to talk about uh, elements of a fiction story uh, with an emphasis on the plot of a story. So we're just going to go ahead and dive in here. Um, all right, let's talk about what every story needs. So the main story elements um, or things that a fiction story or novel needs is the plot which is the main events that take place. The theme, which is the lesson or moral, depending on what type of story, story it is, something that the author wants to get across. The characters, which are people, animals, sometimes objects. Um, setting, which is the time and the place that the story takes place in then some sort of a conflict or problem that needs to be solved. All right. Okay, so let's start at the plot, since that's what we're gonna focus mostly on. Uh, what is the plot? <clears throat> the plot concerns the organization of the main events of a work of fiction. So how is it um, organized? It has to be in some sort of logical order. Most plots will trace some process of change in which characters are caught up in a conflict or a problem that is eventually resolved. All right, and I'm sure you can think of some, even of your, your favorite stories or books, and um, you can probably kind of think of what is the main problem and the conflict that's taking place. All right, so here's a handy dandy little um, plot diagram that kind of sort of shows you how the main events would be organized okay so we start down here with our little hiker guy right we have our exposition at one and we're going to go into more detail in the next slides about what these different parts are we have our rising action two our climax up here at three at the top of our mountain or our diagram falling action at four and then um, our resolution here at five. All right, so let's see. We are going to see, watch him, as you can see, watch him move across. So um, as you go through the plot, there we are at the climax, and then the following action, and then the resolution. So we are gonna talk about what all those different parts are. Okay, so the exposition <clears throat> is the beginning. This occurs at the beginning of a, of a short story or a novel. Here the characters are introduced. So we learn a little bit about them, a little bit about the setting of the story, where does the story take place? And this section might also present some other facts that are necessary to understanding the story. So this is the exposition, okay? So you are this little hiker guy helping us out there. All right. And the important parts of the exposition um, is the setting, which is the time and the place. Um, and then whether it's in a forest or whether it's out in space, depending on what the story is, this looks kind of like more of a traditional sort of fairy tale type setting then we have our characters and generally you have your main character that is known as the protagonist and that character is often the hero of the story and then you have uh, an antagonist who is a character who's in conflict with the protagonist in some way um a lot of times you know you think about the hero type story a lot of stories you know good guy versus bad guy um, not always, but a lot of times. Um, so your antagonist would tend to be sort of the bad guy or the one that's trying to, protagonist is trying to defeat or overcome. And then you, you have a static character. Um, sometimes the character that stays the same throughout the story, they don't really change much. And then you have what you call at least one dynamic character, some character who changes some way throughout the, in the story. They change their behavior or their actions. All right, now we move on to the rising action. 
Um, the rising action includes all the events that lead to the climax. It also presents some sort of conflict. You can see our little hiker guy moving up the mountain there. There's your rising action. <clears throat> all right, at three, we have our climax, which is the high point, the turning point of the story. Usually the main character is gonna come face to face with the conflict. Um, so your protagonist is going to change in some way um, at this point in our story. There he is up at the top of the mountain or the climax of the plot. And then part four, the following action, when all the loose ends of the plot are sort of tied up, all the little situations are um, figured out the conflict or if there's more than one conflict are and the climax are all sort of been taken care of okay during this part so he's falling down the mountain or coming down the mountain and then um, part five is what we call a resolution the story comes to a, a sort of a reasonable ending at this point it doesn't necessarily mean need to be a happy ending but it's some sort of a uh, ending and the conflict is usually resolved. All right, there's our little conflict guy. All right, so kind of summing it up, putting it all together. Um, part one, the exposition is the beginning of your story and your rising action that makes up the beginning of your story. Then your middle of the story, that's when your climax occurs at the top of the mountain. And then the end of your story includes the following action and then the resolution or the conclusion. <clears throat> All right, um, so let's see. We're gonna do a little quick review here on some of these things that we've gone over. So let's see if you can answer the questions. Um, you can just jot down A, B, C, a, B, or C on a piece of paper. All right, so number one, a static character, A, remains the same at the end of the story, or B, changes by the end of the story, or C, is the main character. About a static character. About static, and you hear static on the radio. Does it stay the same? Does it change? All right. And we'll check our answers when we're done. All right, number two, the main character of the story is the A, antagonist, B, protagonist, or C, exposition. All right, question number three. Make sure you jot down the answer because we're going to check them here in a minute. Uh, the part of the story that ties up all the loose ends and takes care of the conflict is the... A, climax, B, falling action, or C, resolution. Okay. And then question number four, the setting is made up of A, protagonist and an antagonist, B, place and characters, or C, time and place. All right, and here are answers. So for number one, it was A. So let's go back. Um, number one, a static character is A, remains the same at the end of the story, so they don't change. All right, and we'll check your answers. For number two was B. So the main character of the story is the protagonist. All right, then for number three, we had B again, and number three, the part of the story that ties up all the loose ends and takes care of the conflict is the falling action. All right. And then number four was, the answer was C. So the setting is made up of the time and place. Sometimes that setting um, might be pretty general as far as the time. It might not give us an exact year. Um, so sometimes it's more specific than other times. All right. Okay, so before we do this, I'm going to 
change over to a different screen. We, um, well, hold on just a minute. I'm not sure what happened to my screen. Okay, hold on just a minute. have it down here. Okay, we're going to just look at some examples of plot through looking at some clips from um, some Disney movies. So let me go back and share this screen. Here we go. All right, this is kind of a quick little video clip going to just show us sort of the plot diagram that we just went over. It's often known as the story mountain, which is going to show us some clips of some Disney and Pixar movies to kind of help us understand the plot diagram a little bit better.
elderly, and for performing above and beyond the call of duty, I would like to award you the highest honor I can bestow, the Ellie Badge. So, um, we're just going to test our, our knowledge here, our plot knowledge a little bit. Um, I know the Three Little Pigs is sort of a pretty well-known story, so, and it's short, which is why um, I'm going to use that. So, um, we're going to watch a little video clip of that, um, and then you're going to have some questions to answer about the plot, the characters, and the setting. All right, so let me get get to that screen Oops. sorry about that um all right and where is that one let me go back sorry it's so many screens up here that i sometimes forget what's what um let me stop the share and get the right one all right, here we go. All right, I think I've got the right one. All right, so here is the story of the Three Little Pigs. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. And when they were old enough, their mother decided it was time for them to seek adventure in the big wide world. So, one sunny morning, they packed their clothes and some sandwiches and off they went. One day, the three little pigs happened upon a lovely woodland clearing and each thought it was the perfect place to build their houses. I am going to build my house from straw, said the first little pig. There's lots of it and it will take very little time. I am going to build my house from sticks, said the second little pig. There are so many of them in this woodland, and it will take me no time at all. I am going to build my house from bricks, said the third little pig. It will be strong and sturdy. His brothers laughed, as they knew the bricks would be heavy, and his house would take a long time to build. Theirs would be finished much sooner, and they would be free to play in the sunshine. So the three little pigs started to build their houses. One day, the first little pig was in his house of straw, and outside appeared a big, bad wolf. The wolf shouted, Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not by the hair on my chinny-chin-chin, chin, he replied. 
Okay, said the wolf. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew the straw house down. The little pig was so scared he ran to his brother's house. He told him about the wolf and they hid under the table. Once again, the wolf shouted, "Little pigs, little pigs, let me in!" Not by the hair on our chinny chin chins," replied the little pigs. "Very well," said the wolf. "I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down." So he huffed and he puffed and he blew the stick house down. They were so scared that they ran to their brother's house, the third little pig, and they told him about the big bad wolf. But he wasn't afraid, as he knew his house was built with good strong bricks. Once again, the big bad wolf shouted, "Little pigs, little pigs, let me in!" Not by the hair on our chinny chin chins," replied the three little pigs. So the big bad wolf said, "I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down." And he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed. But the house was made of good strong bricks and would not move. The three little pigs were very pleased. By now, the big bad wolf was very cross. Because no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't move the house. He decided to climb onto the roof of the brick house and sneak down the chimney. But the little pig was too clever, and had a big pot of soup bubbling over the fire. As the big bad wolf came down the chimney, he caught his bushy tail in the bubbling pot and gave such a scream that it sent him back up the chimney. And he landed outside with a thud. The big bad wolf was so afraid of the three little pigs that he ran far into the woods, and from that day forward, he was never seen again. And the three little pigs lived happily ever after. All right. All right. Let me go back to our PowerPoint. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can't answer some questions about plot based on that. So here is、um, the diagram. Here's our plot diagram. We have their exposition, and then five events that made up the rising action: our climax at the top, falling action, and then our resolution of our conflict. So I'm going to leave that up for a few minutes, and. I want you to see if you can think about what you think goes in each of those parts of the plot. So remember, the exposition is just the beginning, introducing the story, the characters, the setting, right? And then the rising action. These are the main events of the little pigs, three little pigs,、um, leading up to the climax at the top. Um, and then what happens after the climax, and then how does the story get resolved? So I'm going to leave it up for a few minutes, and let you think about what goes in each of those spaces on the plot diagram, and then we're going to check our answers to see if we were right. All right. Let's see. Let's check ourselves. All right. So, an exposition.、Um, this is when the three little pigs leave home to find adventure in the big world. All right. So that's the introduction. We've we've、uh, met the three pigs. We know that the setting is it's pretty general. They're somewhere in the woods. We're not exactly sure where,、um, but they're getting ready to leave、um, their home. All right, to start a new life. All right, and then rising action. We have event one. Pigs come across a beautiful clearing they think would be a perfect spot to build their homes. Then 
Event two, pig one builds a house of straw, pig two builds a house of sticks, and pig three builds a house of bricks. Okay, then we have event three, the big bad wolf blows down the straw house, and pig one escapes and goes to pig two's house. Event four, of course, the big bad wolf, who is also our antagonist, right, is blowing the stick house down, blows the stick house down, and then pig one and two go to pig three's house. And then um, the last event of the rising action, event five, the big bad wolf tries several times, but can't blow down the brick house. And then we, which leads us to our con, or, or excuse me, our climax. Uh, which where the wolf decides to sneak down the chimney to get the pigs. And this is the climax of our story. Um, but, and then our falling action is the wolf falls into the boiling pot of soup. And then our resolution is that the big bad wolf is so scared of the three little pigs, he runs off the woods, never to be seen again, and the three little pigs live happily ever after. So their conflict, their problem with the big bad wolf um, is resolved, and uh, I know that's a old, you know, it's a kind of a silly story, but it's familiar, so that's why I chose it for us to look at. Um, all right, let's see if you can answer these few story, uh, excuse me, questions about the th three little pigs. Um, you can just dot down and answer um, on a piece of paper. So what is the setting of the three little pigs? Who is the protagonist or the main character? Um, who is the antagonist who is in conflict with the protagonist? And what is the conflict? All right, so I'm gonna give you a few minutes with those questions. All right, and then we're going to check our answers. All right, so what is the setting? The clearing where the three little pigs built their homes. Time, it's not really known. We just know it's when their mother thought it was time for them to leave home. They're old enough to be out on their own. Uh, who is the protagonist? So pig number three, so the, the smarter one, the one that built his house of bricks. And who is the antagonist that he's in conflict with is the big bad wolf. And then what is the conflict? Um, of course, the big bad wolf trying to destroy the houses of the three pigs. All right, good job, nice work Bulldogs. And um, that is all I have um, for this lesson for today. So I will see you later.